The Holy Gospel according to John, the ninth chapter. Like last week, this gospel reading is very long, so I'm going to invite you to just be seated for the gospel today. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud and spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the, man who had, of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, to him, his parents said he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. He answered, I, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, 
your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. At a previous congregation where I worked, we had a tradition of the confirmation students picking the verse that they wanted read at their confirmation. So they would pick their verse, and then they would come for an interview uh, with the pastors and a few council members, and they would talk about their verse and why it was meaningful to them. And one year we had this student, this young girl, who really, truly moved me with her confirmation verse. She had really struggled at school um, with a group of friends and um, uh, feeling bad about the fact that she uh, was part of kind of a mean girls group and that she judged others, but she also felt judged all the time. So she really got this verse in Samuel, um, the verse that says, <clears throat> Do not look upon his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. For her confirmation, it helped her go through transformation to understand that God sees inside and what's important. God sees the good in us and also the bad. And also, she could maybe learn to look at others in the same way. And isn't that interesting that God sees what we don't see? In this process of anointing a new king, all of David's brothers are brought before Samuel, and Samuel rejects each one of them, even though those, they, the people believe surely it's going to be one of these. In fact, they were so sure it was going to be one of those brothers that they weren't even going to bring David out for, uh, for Samuel. But Samuel says, is there another? And sure enough, they bring David, and David is the one who is anointed. In many cases, because we can't see we miss the good in others. But it's also easier to hide away what we don't want others to see as well. God sees not only the good in us, but God also sees the things we try to hide away, the things that muddy the waters and keep us from shining. Now, Lent is traditionally a season in the church in which we reflect on all of who we are, including what we, uh, the ways that we need to reconcile with God and the ways that we are sinful. But it is also a season in which people have traditionally prepared for baptisms. In the early church, many people would be preparing for several weeks during Lent, and then at the Easter vigil would be baptized. So as we celebrate Christ's resurrection and new life, so too they would be baptized and brought into their own new life in Christ. It's in this baptism that God washes away our muddiness. Now we are able to see like the story of the blind man. Jesus spits on the ground and makes some mud and puts the mud on the man's eyes and then tells him to go wash and then he can see again. Now I often wonder why doesn't he just put his hands on him and say, May you see, and, and then the guy's not blind anymore. Why is it that Jesus has to do this whole process with the mud and making him go wash? But as I was preparing this week for the sermon, it occurred to me, isn't that symbolic, right? That he puts the mud on to symbol, symbolize the fact that we can't see, that the mud makes everything muddy and we, it, we can't see clearly but then Jesus tells him to go wash, and it's that washing that Jesus gives him that cleanses him and helps him to see again. Jesus also says in this passage in the gospel, I am the light of the world. It's another one of the great I am statements in the book of John. We started last week with Jesus telling the woman at the well, I am he, and she comes to faith and she goes and shares with all of her neighbors and in the town. And in this story today, the blind man comes to believe in the Messiah. God sees us in our darkness as well. The darkness where there is secrets and unseen, where there's unknown and there's fear. 
God sees the innermost things that we try to hide away. When Jesus is the light of the world, secrets can be revealed and brought back into the light. Confession draws out what we seek to hide and allows the waters of baptism to wash us clean in order that we can see again and shine for others, just like in our cups of mud and clear water. In our story today, the people are also tempted to ask, why is this man born blind? Whose fault is it? Is it the parents' sins? Is it, was he born in sin right away, and he's, so he's blind? What, who's to blame? Whose fault is it? Of course, in those times, they believed that if you had some kind of um, disability, that it was a result of something bad you had done. But isn't that just like us, wanting to know the cause, wanting to know the blame, figure out who did it? And sometimes we don't want to admit that there's fault in ourselves, and we're always looking for a reason to judge someone, or we feel judged by others, and we judge by what we can see and not what we can't see. To Jesus, however, in the story today, it doesn't matter why the man was born blind. God isn't looking at the reasons, but only to wash the man clean and make him see again. It's us who want to blame. It's Christ who seeks to forgive. I want to reread our Ephesians passage today. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Christ is the light of the world. In baptism, Christ washes away the dirt and the mud. We are made clean. And we no longer live in secret, but in God's light. The fruits of the light are lived out in us through the Holy Spirit. Today I ask, what is muddying your water? And I also invite you to hear the good news that God has come to cleanse you. So let God wash away the mud so that you may once again see yourself and others more clearly and enjoy the light which penetrates what was once dark. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen.